Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another acrylic painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be working on a 9x12 double primed and stretched canvas. I have the following colors I'll be using and I'll list these below the video and just in the description box. Starting off with titanium white, we've got primary yellow, sap green, turquoise green, light olive green, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, and some neon pink. For today's painting, you're going to be needing a number three round brush, a one inch mop brush, a number two rigger brush, a number 20 flat brush, and finally a number 14 filbert brush. I'm going to start the painting by spraying it with a little bit of water. And I'm just going to spread it evenly over the canvas. This helps prep the canvas to take the paint a lot better. It really helps with blending. Okay, the first color I'm going to take is my yellow. I'm just going to start adding it around the left side. And then bring it over towards the right. I'll rinse my brush out. And the next color I'm going to take is white. I'll take a little bit of my neon pink along with that, mix that up. And then I'm just going to start blocking in this area partially over the yellow to make a light soft orange shade. And if you pick up a lot of yellow while doing this, you might want to rinse your brush out again before reloading with the pink. And then we'll continue along over here. I'm going to add some more white. This will soften both the yellow and the pink. And we'll just make some softer tones of each color. Okay, the next color I'm going to use, I've rinsed my brush out. I'm going to take some of my light olive green and bring it down here. And I'm going to start below the middle of the canvas, about an inch. I'm going to add a little hill like this. And we'll come down into a little meadow or grass landing here. Be a little bit more generous. This will make it darker. This is a transparent paint and color we're using. It layers over and filters nicely over the other colors we have already on our canvas. Okay, with a clean brush, the next colors I'm going to be using are sap green, a little bit of burnt sienna, and a little bit of phthalo blue. By mixing these three colors, we'll be able to get a really nice deep dark color of 
other than just using straight black. This is way more interesting to use and it adds more life and depth to your paintings. So I'm just going to come down the side here, adding some shadows. And we're going to block in this area. I'm just going back and forth, sort of little crisscrosses here. And I'll take a little bit of white on the end of my brush with a little bit of that dark green. I'll slide my brush back and forth, side to side down here. Take a little bit more white again and the remainder of the green. rinsing my brush out. I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of that light olive green and I'm going to apply it partially over the darker green that we added with white and the peachy pink. Taking a little bit of water on the tip of my brush, I'm just going to pull a few tree trunks up, different directions. Then I'll take my burnt sienna and just go right over. And a little bit of blue. Burnt sienna and some phthalo blue now. I'm going to add some rocks. Just going over, creating these sort of half circle shapes. And some smaller ones. A little bit more of the burnt sienna now. And I'm going to kind of just tap around the base of these trees. Pull and sweep. Sweep from this side as well. Rinsing my brush out. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to come down here partially over the sky and partially over the light olive green. I'm going to create a scoop in here, go down and then up slightly. Just to add a little bit more light. I picked up a little bit of blue doing this and I'm going to go with that because 
I am painting intuitively right now. And sometimes this happens where it's not the color I planned, but look how pretty that looks. So I like those little happy accidents. So whenever something like this happens to you, trust that it was meant to be there and it was meant to happen because sometimes it can look really, really pretty. Now the next color I'm gonna use is a little bit of turquoise and a little bit of white. I'm gonna go with my flat brush with a tip, flat towards those rocks, and then little loops. Okay, it's time to switch over to another brush. We're gonna be using a number two rigor brush next. You wanna make sure you get it wet. And you wanna take some blue and some burnt sienna. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more water, thin that paint out so it flows easily out of my brush when I go to make these little branches. So I'm gonna start on the bottom and then I'm gonna work my way out wiggling You shouldn't need to use a lot of pressure. If you feel like you need to, you might need more water in your brush. So you can bring these branches over more to the left, more to towards the sky, the top of the sky, or to the right. You can add them wherever you want. I'm just going to make these tree trunks a little bit darker and slightly wider at the base. Rinsing my brush out. I'm now going to use my one inch mop brush. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to take a little bit of sap green. My brush is like there's no water in it, it's dry, and I'm just going right into my paint to load it. A little bit of that burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna start lightly tapping the tops of my branches. We don't want anything too solid. We want this to look nice and light and airy. And then why don't we go ahead and add a little bit down here, a little bit of bushes and grass. And a little bit down here as well, over and around these rocks. and up along this hill. A little gentle pull and sweep. Just with the end of my brush and a little bit of pressure. Very light.
Now let's add a highlight, a softer green. So we'll use this um, light olive green, maybe a little bit of yellow as well. Again, a clean, dry brush. A little bit more of that. Tap your brush to load. And it's normal if it looks a little bit like this, kind of flat like that. That's primarily the part of the brush that we want to be using anyways. And we just want to apply this partially over the sky and then partially over the dark green base that we added first. Okay, let's come around here. A gentle little sweep. And a little tap. Now this is mostly in shadow here, so I kind of like the way that looks dark, and I want to just leave that the way it is. The next thing I'm going to do is just take what's left on my brush here, and I'm just going to gently tap in some taller, narrower trees. Before I come in, I think I'm going to add like a little cabin. I want to add just a little bit more green, light green to the water for a bit of a reflection. I'm going to go back over to my number two rigger brush and I'm going to take a little bit of that burnt sienna, a little bit of that sap green. Make sure you have water in your brush. I'm going to add a few extra little delicate branches. Maybe a few hanging that don't have really any leaves on them. But yeah, it's really important to make sure that you've got enough water in your brush. You need more when working with liner type brushes like this. Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to create the brush stroke that you want. The water really helps to glide your paint out of your brush. Now I'm really going to thin this paint out really, really translucent. And I'll just add a few other trees back here that don't really have any leaves on them either. Something in the background here. Again, accidentally unplanned picking up some of the blue off this rock. I'm going to go with it and use that to add to my little tree back here. Now I'm going to dry this all off. I'm going to come in and add a cozy little cottage or cabin here. And We'll see where we go from there. A 
The brush I'm going to use for our cabin is because I'm painting a small cabin or cottage, I'm going to use a small brush. So I've got a number three round brush here. You can use any small brush you feel comfortable with. And I'm just going to take a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of phthalo blue to make a nice dark color. And all I'm going to do is add a diagonal line right here. Let's add another one right here. Bring it over, connect them. Come down here, add a little line. Connect those so you've got a rectangle here and a slanted one here. Then we're gonna come in because the roof line here is facing us. We're going to see a little bit of shadow in there, so that's why I'm making it a little bit dark or thicker. And we'll bring it just out a little bit on the end. And then down and across. I'm going to take burnt sienna. I'm going to bring my roof line down a little bit lower. This adds a little bit more character than cutting everything in half. You don't want to make the walls of the house the same length or width of your roof line. So choose either to have a shorter or narrower roof or one that comes down lower. It just makes it look cozier, I find, when you add more of a more of a roof. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And the next color, I'm gonna take some white. Now, because I have wet paint here, I'm probably going to um, pull into that as I'm adding this, and that's fine because that'll make a nice, soft, sort of brown color and also give us a little bit of a woodsy kind of cottage or cabin look. Now, these are just the colors I happen to be using, but you can paint yours any color that you want. Just paint it, you know, just follow these steps the same using different colors. As long as your roof is darker than the rest of your house. Because you need that contrast. And I'm going to add a little chimney and go over with a little bit more white. And then I'll go back into my burnt sienna and blue. I'm going to add a little kind of cap here on the top of my chimney. I'm going to go over the inside. I'm going to add some windows, a little dab here, one here, and then a little door. And I'll add two windows on the side of the house. I'm going to pick up some sap green and some light olive green. So right now it kind of looks like we've just taken a sticker and just stuck it there and it isn't nestled in to the rest of this landscape or hillside yet. So I'm going to show you how you can instantly do that. Just going over top of the base of the house with some grass, bushes, flowers or plants.
I'm going to take a little bit more burnt sienna. This time I'm going to take a little bit of white. Mix the two up. And I'm going to come in the middle of the roof on either side, really, of that chimney. Okay, then I'm going to take burnt sienna and blue again. Make that nice dark, dark color. I'm going to add a little bit more over top of the chimney because it's a little bit too thick for my liking. And then I'm going to add a line here. I'm going to come down lower. And just define the roof. Now see what a difference that makes just adding this really, really dark shadow. I always like to add a little puff of smoke coming out of the chimney. Just a little bit of white, either a dry brush or a little bit of water with the white. And I'm going to add a little line, straight white, no water on my brush, just white paint only. Or some shutters or trim. Okay, the next brush we're going to be using is my number 14 Filbert brush. By the way, you can purchase a set of my brushes uh, at craftable.com. I'll have a link below for those. No water at all on my brush, a little bit of yellow and light olive green. Just with the end of my brush, just tapping in. I'm going to take a little bit of white so this shows up even more. Mix a bit of white in there and just tap lightly. There now it looks like our house is nestled in there a little bit more. I'm going to take a little bit of that sap green, maybe a little bit of whatever's left in my brush, the yellow and the light olive green, plus a little bit of that burnt sienna over here. Can I add a little bit more depth? Pull and sweep. Little scumble around the side here. And a little bit more white, yellow, and olive green. And I'll just tap another soft highlight here. And a dry brush, little scumble. Get those colors again. And then right in here, I'm going to push and tap. Pull up there. And a little, if I can sneak in here, right in there. Let's try that again with a little bit more white. And 
I'm going to go back over to my number 20 flat brush and I'm going to take a little bit of white and blue and I'm going to add a little trickle of waterfall coming down here. Nothing too crazy, just relaxing. A little bit of turquoise as well. And see how the brush, see how the bristles are separating? That's really, really helpful and beneficial when painting flowing water. Because then you get those little lines. Another one right there. And another one over on this rock. Use a little bit more white now and help us catch a little bit of foam and ruffles at the bottom and right off the edge of where they flow over. I'm going to use the corner of this flat brush now with blue and sap green and a little bit of sap green, a little bit of phthalo blue, that dark color again. And I just want to add a little bit more shadows in here in contrast to set that house in, make it look a little bit more nestled in this area. Okay, so I'm thinking it might be kind of pretty to just kind of give this a little bit of a frame rounded frame here with some pretty pink flowers. I've got some pink left here. I've got my number three round brush and I'm going to take some pink, maybe even a little bit of blue and we can make pinky purple. Soften that with some white. So I'm adding quite a bit of white. Oh, a little bit of burnt sienna ended up in there. It's kind of nice. It's warming it up. And with a little bit on the tip of my brush, I'm just going to place my pinky here. This is all dry now. And I'm going to start just pulling little flower petals, dabbing. So if you don't apply too much pressure, your paint will go further when painting these. I want it to be kind of a crescent moon shape flow of this little flower section here. So they're going to get narrower and just kind of little dabs here and then fuller in this area. Now I'm going to add more white and we can start overlapping. And I tend to do at least five flower petals, but you can do less or more if you want. 
This is just basic, basic, simple. Anybody can do these flowers. And you can make them any color you want. Red, pink, magenta. Think of what's also like going to be complementary. There is a lot of green. So sticking with reds and pinks and purple as well is going to be complementary. You can't go wrong with that. It would look kind of pretty to have some up in this corner too. A little bit more paint and a little bit of water to my brush. So just push, push, tap, push, push. Don't try to make every single flower have a certain amount of petals have some just little dots and dabs here that are a little bit messier looking in between those to make it look a little bit more natural you don't want to have everything in full focus in your paintings Okay, then I'm going to take more white, mix that up, and in this area here, I'll add a few more petals. And a few little, little flower buds, or maybe petals falling. And as the paint starts to dry, you'll be able to know where you need to add a little bit more white to make some of them show up more.
And see how I'm just kind of dabbing and then gently blending and scumbling that around. So it kind of gets lost along the edges and blends into the sky in the background. Okay, this painting's all done. This was really relaxing and fun to paint. I hope you guys learned a lot and enjoyed watching this. Feel free to paint along. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. I'll see you guys all soon in my next video. Bye!